I have a confession. I like chicken. I love burgers. I adore meat. There is not a day that goes by when I don't yearn for a packet of the good old Haribo's. And yes, I do not regret becoming vegetarian. In fact, it was the best choice I ever made. When I was five, I found out that meat did not come from trees. I was then told that when an animal died of old age, its body was eaten by us. Though I did not think it fair that the animal was not buried, I accepted the fact that at least its body was not going to waste. However, at the age of about 10, I discovered that most animals did not get to live out their lives, but were usually killed within a year or two. When asked how they died, I was told is a quick injection. I think it was the age of about 11 or 12 that I finally discovered the whole truth, what truly went on behind the doors of a slaughterhouse. Before then, I hadn't been aware of what I'd been eating. Since the age of about nine, I've wanted to become a vegetarian. But as the rest of my family were meat eaters, and I was a very fussy eater when it came to vegetables, I never really pushed it that hard. I pretty much accepted there was something I would do when I was older. However, when I finally fully come to terms with what I'd been eating and had ran out of excuses as to why I should still be eating meat, I said to my family, after recently turning 12, if I promise to eat every vegetable put on my plate, even salads, and to help with cooking, can I become a vegetarian? At first, being vegetarian was hard. I had to eat an amazing, creative, new variety of foods. Thanks, Mum and Dad. And to be honest, in the beginning, I hated all of them. However, eating these foods so frequently made my taste buds gradually adapt. And amazingly, within a few weeks or two, I loved all the foods I previously hated as a meat eater. Being vegetarian has more perks than you could ever imagine, both personally and globally. I'm speaking today to convince you all to open your minds and your taste buds to the terrifying diet of a vegetarian. In first world countries, meat is not necessary for a healthy diet. Killing animals is a choice we humans make every meal. A choice that kills over 56 billion farm animals every year. A choice that kills over 3,000 animals every second. <sighs> that one second just there that I took, pausing for breath, over 3,000 animals just died in that second. By the time I finish this talk, over one million animals will have been killed due to our dietary choices. But even if I didn't care about the humane aspect of eating meat, knowing all that I do now, I still would have become a vegetarian. A few weeks ago, my family and I were watching a documentary about global warming on TV, and my little brother suddenly says, I will almost be happy if I die at a young age when I'm older, because I do not want to be around when the earth blows up. My carefree nine-year-old brother is scared for the future. Perhaps the world blowing up is a bit extreme, but human extinction is definitely still on the table. Avoiding human extinction means we have to combat global warming. Raise your hand if you think global warming is bad. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think global warming is a problem we need to fix. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think, if you want to help save our planet. <laughs> now raise your hand if you eat meat. <laughs> okay, this is awkward, but uh, animal agriculture is the leading cause to global warming, water depletion, deforestation, animal extinction, and ocean dead zones. Animal agriculture produces huge amounts of greenhouse gas emissions, more than transportation. Meaning, if you want to help save our planet, you'd be far better off swapping out meat than buying, say, a hamburger. 
or than buying, say, an electric car. <laughs> in fact, the majority of scientists believe that reducing meat consumption may be one of the best strategies for managing global warming. A vegetarian diet would also greatly reduce water consumption. Get this, one pound of beef requires 1,799 gallons of water, which is the equivalent to roughly 22 filled bathtubs, compared to just three bathtubs for garden vegetables. In fact, one person can save more than 162 thousand gallons of water annually by giving up just burgers, bacon, and nuggets alone, which is enough for 445 people. And as well as water consumption, it takes about 1 billion tons of grain to feed livestock. Meanwhile, 22,000 children die each day due to poverty. And yet, you could feed 3.5 billion people with that grain. In fact, in the US alone, they could produce 23% more food if all animals were removed from its agricultural system. So there you have it. That is what eating meat means for the environment, for our home, for the less fortunate people living on it, and why human extinction is still on the table. But let's go more personal. What does eating meat mean for your health? One snappy fact, processed meats such as bacon, chicken, and burgers are carcinogenic, meaning they can cause cancer in humans. This was announced by the World Health Organization, but as well as that, studies have shown that vegetarians live significantly longer lives than meat eaters and have low risks of high blood pressure and heart disease. Plus, I was the fussiest eater in the whole world. I never even heard of a lentil and hated eggs before I became vegetarian. My main question at the dinner table would be, what the heck is broccoli? But hey, here I am, somehow still alive and healthier than ever. Now, up to this point, unless you've been asleep, I've said some pretty negative things about meat. So your logic might be telling you, ooh, maybe I should cut down on that ribeye steak tonight. But then your taste buds might be shouting, hey, it's Friday, I've got through the week, I deserve this. So you're faced with a bit of a dilemma. You know it's bad for your home, you know it's bad for your health, your humanity, but you still can't face a world without meat. Luckily, I've got a solution. Now previously, upon hearing the word flexitarian, I was pretty skeptical. This would be my follow-up expression. In case you didn't realize that was an eye roll. <laughs> I thought it was a silly concept, as flexitarians are basically on and off vegetarians. Sometimes they don't eat meat, and sometimes they do. Simply a fancy word for every other omnivore. However, if everyone were a flexitarian, we would all be a little more conscious as to what we eat. Now, I think of flexitarians as conscious eaters. If each one of us remembered every so often, oh wait, I'm a flexitarian, before they bought a bacon sandwich and chose a falafel or something instead, then even that tiny decision could make a massive difference. Quite literally, food for thought. So please, if you can just take one thing away from this talk, take this. It is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do a little. Thank you.